Onivia, League of Legends highlights. You know, is it just going to be something like the NAR, um, pretty safe and standard? Someday has always been a very big fan of Renekton. Not so much this year as it hasn't really been a common pick, but has played gold for an Amp Tome. So he comes back with an Amp Tome and a Pink Ward. Uh, his opponent got a tier and a Dark Seal on the additional buy, which is way more powerful, but now they're looking to chase him down. They're not revenge at 200 HP. Closer gonna jump in. Yeah, it's gonna guarantee. He's gonna grab first blood. Bonus stats not needed. Down goes the top lane. Xerxes shows up and you're dropping. Yeah. Like, what would you have dropped if you walked? Now now he actually can't try to defend under tower because if he takes too much damage, he can't TP back. So he has yep. to back off. And it's one of those weird situations. Where he's going to try to get in the XP range, get six now. We'll see if he can do it. Is he close enough? He's going to burn oh. Ghost, but as he plays under the tower, now with Pee Wee, they're going to go for this one now. Not level six. They're going to find the first stun. Flash over, going to drop aggro. There goes the kill. And no way, easy way back into the wave. We're going to find two plates down and a wave or three lost. 22 minutes if they get it on cooldown every time. Like, that is really, really, really fast. So down it goes, and we're going to get our... going to be there in time, and... I think both teams kind of giving her respect, knowing that both teams are making the appropriate plays. Leona is missing bot. So. Oh, walks all the way in. Nautilus is already there. Just going to lose right away. Revenge uh, face checks a 1v2 and fall. Right here, second hero. That will pretty much fully crack the mid lane tower if it's summoned there. We walk in. First bit of crackle comes across. Nautilus ulti. He's going to hit the back lane for three stuns total. And it's already mortals running away. Yeah, I don't think they can walk back in now. Abadog is here. You can't actually walk in through the laser, through the gravity field. So they are just zoning it out. They're going to grab themselves another Herald. So Immortals move five men up here. Oh, someday. Lobo split up. Has to burn the flash. Goes going to go over that one as well with the exhaust on. Going to get some decent damage. But now on the bottom side, watch out for Destiny. Where the stopwatch stays alive. Closer goes in. Only finds one of the ultis. Something going to try to find the backline access. Revenge already goes down. A jump over the wall for Arrow. Trying to trade back on a someday. And they will get a one for one. A flashback for Power Reveal now on the bottom side. So far, not too bad as we open up another one. As Xerxes grabs it, gets the shield, walks out. Pee-wee's got to run. He needs that shield back from Kuro, but he's going to go down. Second. Kill now picked up on both sides as it's going to be a disengage. Harold still clay, but a decent fight for Mortal. But they don't know if everyone is based. So I think they're a little bit wary that someone could be in that brush besides FBI. They didn't have eyes on those recalls. They're going to go for it now, though. He let the wave come down to the tower. He's going to go ahead and give up the assist as well. I think he should have just given up a solo kill. Dare I, but I got to land the skill shots. Yeah, he landed. Them just giving it up. We'll have to see if he wants to go for the steal. He could definitely get the steal, but he'll probably fight. die. This is like not hard to get. He's going to grab that one, jumps over the wall. Ult coming in for big damage and closer. Just won't die. Finally trades his life out, but a two for one. Kaisa grabs two, and it turns out Xerxes buying time. Here in on to someday, trying to push him out of that fight. You can see FBI dancing around there in the back with Abadaga knocking down one side of the pit and actually trying to look for a very early stun on Closer. He did yeah. look for the ulti, uh, but at that point, Closer was already dashing, so he kind of got past it, gets that kill. They're going for a fight topside, though. Find that stun. Good damage. And I don't know if there's a way out as well. A down goes Abadaga, but the rest of the fight looks pretty good because the Chaos Storm got out. So two trade kills, and they're going to make it a third as well. Immortals find a pick, but they fall right after. Uh, and that's their TP down at these, cruising in this one. Already 4K up going to make it five. They're pushing the mid-tier two as well. And they're just two and a half. One, those in your basement, yeah, yes, so. yeah, you know, you, I only your house. Like, you would yeah, have been there. I'm the mayor. Um, here we go, though. Dragon, Soul on the dock, and who he engages takes a ton of damage, gets right back out, and we got the Chaos Storm in the back line. Immortals turns tail to run, and 100 Thieves come to take a whole lot more. Without legs, you're not getting away. Two for nothing, they run to the hills, but Closer wants yet another. Three for nothing, is it gonna be? Revenge just barely gets away. Way in, but it's so damn hard to do. They just don't have full vision of the area, so they're trying to force their way in here. We are walking through lasers. We could defend it by saying, okay, if you have no vision control, right, you're screwed. Like, maybe you hope someone's out of vision currently fighting the dragon when you come in a fight, but I mean, it's so tough. Like, they're it, so it far out. I mean, you're, you're way down in gold, right? And it's one of those situations that they don't feel that they can take a difficult way to play it out. They're pretty limited because 100 Thieves, I think, has done a great job choking them out and controlling the vision. So this is, you know, more credit to 100 Thieves. So 100 Thieves have drafted well for their rank condition. They utilize the bot 2v2 pressure to get early access to these dragons. And then 100 Thieves looking to close this one out. It's been a very strong showing. It's only 26 minutes in. And it's one of those games where it's been so dominant that you're kind of like, why haven't they ended yet? And it's like, well, this the final inhibitor kill. 100 Thieves to close the game out under 30 minutes. They will not defend the tower itself. They will play for the Nexus turrets, but the problem is, this means they can walk back. TP, they want to force that out of him. 
So now the top wave is going to stack up because he couldn't push it all the way out. They're going to have to use that second TP to try to no contest plan, here. No but flash. He no literally way cannot in. smite this. There's not a way to steal it. There we go. Dragon and claimed revenge. Could have tried for the shock blast but I believe it would have been through Fog of War. So now the team fight starts, Elder Dragon's on, down goes one, two, three, here comes number four, and a flash for revenge. You might as well try to get one kill on FBI. He's sidestepping the shots, <laughs> I mean, at least the fancy footwork's good. Is that Neo? But it's a flash forward, it's a kill, it's the ace! And 100 Thieves gonna close this one out. Under 30 minutes, a Bud Light ace on, 16 to six. 100 Thieves retain third place. And if Immortals want to join the fans and be on stage, they gotta find Three wins the next four games. It's going to be tough for Immortals, especially off of a game like this. Pretty disheartening. Heart of Thieves, though, coming up big in their first game of the weekend. We're getting down to it. Second last.